Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Permanent Canadian. I hope you all are doing great and today I'm very sad and happy at the same time. I will share why really soon. But before starting with the video, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I would like to request you guys to do subscribe, like and share it so that more and more people can get this amazing piece of information. Now, let's start the video. Of lately, I have come across a lot of people whose visitor visas has been rejected and the sad part is not only once but more than once. So guys, why are you even listening to the idiot consultants who are just getting paid to put your file across? I feel more than them you are responsible for your visa to get rejected because you leave everything on the stupid consultants and think that they will get you the visa even if they have not submitted the required documents or might have not done the documentation properly. I know nobody can guarantee you a visa but still there are certain rules and methods that you should follow to successfully obtain the visa. I am not saying that all of the consultants are bad. There are amazing ones as well but you also have to have some knowledge to see whether the consultant is doing it in a right way or not because ultimately you are the one who is going to face the consequences due to the silly mistakes done by them. So please, please, please do not completely rely on them. You have to show active involvement in your case because if it gets rejected once then from next time it will be seen from the point of view of getting rejected only. However, there have been instances where you get the visa second time but do not take your chances to get it rejected in the first place only. Now the good news is I have analyzed a list of reasons that why it gets rejected and according to those situations I will share what should not be done while filing a visitor visa and when is the best time to file it to avoid getting it rejected. So now let's start the things which you should not do while applying a visitor visa. Do not apply alone at the age of 18 to 30 years. Firstly, if you are applying for a visitor visa alone like a single applicant then do not apply unless you can show strong ties to your country. You can prove your strong ties by showing them your employment details like offer letter, reference letter, salary slip or non-objection certificate from your company stating that they know you will leave for that particular duration. Also to prove your strong ties you can show property papers on your name any other assets like vehicle, fixed deposits, health insurance policies, life insurance policies. If you are married and still applying alone then you might get a bit of weightage because you have a reason to come back which is your other half. But if you are applying alone and not married and fall between the age of 18 to 30 years then definitely do not apply. There are high chance of rejection because this age is the most vulnerable to take a step of not going back to their home country since they do not have much of a responsibility. To overcome this problem, you can apply as a family and portray it as a family trip. Even though later on you travel alone, it is just to increase the visa success rate. Next is, do not mention Niagara Falls. If it is your first international trip, you must prove why do you want to visit Canada as your first international travel destination. And guys, please, 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 do not say that you want to see Niagara Falls. It is really not convincing since it is also visible from the United States. You have to find something better which is convincible enough like if there is some kind of an event which only happens in Canada and you are really interested in seeing that. Thirdly, do not apply if you are not financially stable. You have to show enough funds in your bank account not only just for the trip but also for your survival when you come back to your home country. For example, if you have accumulated $10,000 at the time of applying for the visitor visa, then after all the expenses on the trip, if you are left with $5,000, it is still convincible as compared to if you have $6,000 in total and after your trip expenses, you are only left with $1,000. In the second case, there are high chances of rejection because it is a human psychology that if you exhaust all of your savings on a trip, then definitely you would not consider taking that trip. Instead, you will go to some other destination wherein you are not existing your majority of savings. But still, if you apply with the second scenario, it will be considered as something suspicious and there are high chances that the decision might not come into your favor. Next is, do not show the immediate transfer of funds. This is the most common reason of rejection when you show funds that have transferred to your account recently. 
I'm not talking about the salary or other small amounts, but an irregular transaction which does not happen quite often. There's something like you might have given that amount to someone else in the past, but they have paid you back recently. However, a visa officer doesn't know about the whole backstory. From the point of view of visa officer, it will be considered as you have borrowed this amount from someone just to show as a proof of funds for your Canada visitor visa. But still, if something like this has happened, you can provide a proof of transaction stating that it is your own money and is not borrowed. Next is, do not apply for a longer duration. This is the best option that you must consider while applying for a tourist visa in Canada. Why you should not mention the actual days because the shorter your duration of stay would be, the more other factors would come into your favor. Like in case of your finances, if you are applying for a tourist visa in Canada for the duration of 21 days, then the requirement of funds which you would have to show would be around $2700 apart from your travel expenses. However, if you reduce the duration of stay to 1 week or 10 days, then the requirement of funds is reduced drastically to $1,200. Even though you do not reduce the actual number of days on a trip, but just to increase your chances of visa approval, you should consider reducing the actual number of days to 7 to 10 days. Since you get the visa for 10 years, you can decide the number of days later on once you receive it. Do not submit your application without these three documents. There are three documents that are not ours in the checklist but definitely plays a vital role in convincing the visa officer to give you approval on your visit visa. These documents prove your genuine intent of your visit to the country which are your return airfare, hotel bookings and itinerary. For return airfare, I am not suggesting you to buy original tickets unless you get a refundable ticket option. For example, if you have purchased a non-refundable return airfare ticket and God forbid your visa gets rejected, then all of your money will be wasted. So, it is better you buy a refundable air ticket or there are travel agents who book dummy tickets that show airline bookings on the actual airline's website without even buying it. But make sure you choose someone reliable for this method. Next, if we talk about hotel bookings, then there are websites like bookings.com, hotels.com which provides free booking without any payment or 100% refundable bookings and free cancellation policies. So, you can book your accommodation through their website to show that all of your accommodation has been taken care of in advance. You can check these websites from the link in the description. Lastly, your itinerary states all your plans that you would do from the time you enter Canada to your exit from the country. That will showcase the amount of research and your interest to visit the place that plays an important role in front of the visa officer while taking the decision on your application. Do not submit your application without this last document. This document is the whole crux behind the reason why you want to visit this particular country. What is your economic and financial stability in your home country? What is your employment scenario and everything about yourself? This document is also known as a letter of explanation on the basis of which you can come forward and express what you want to say. Since 99% of the time you will not receive any call for an interview to express yourself, so the decision will be taken on the basis of how strongly you put your points across the visa officer, who will then understand your reasons and make a decision on your case. Lastly, just put this letter as a supporting document. If you know someone who can provide you with an invitation letter, then your chances of getting a visa increases since it will show that you know someone here in Canada who is vouching for you. However, it does not influence the decision but certainly puts a weightage in your favor. The person who is inviting you should also provide the details like employment details, current status in the country and if they are sponsoring your stay then their bank statements, salary slip and other finance related documents. Now, I hope that I have provided you with deep insights that you can implement while filing your visitor visa to Canada. Another thing is, you can follow these steps even if you are applying for a visitor visa for any other country because the reasons for rejection are more or less the same. So, these tips and tricks will definitely work in your favor. Still, if you have any doubt related to your visitor visa because it highly varies from case to case, you can comment below with your question and we will get back to you as soon as you can. Also, if you are interested in applying for permanent residency in Canada, then do watch our 8-step guide on how to proceed with the PR process by doing it yourself without any lawyer or consultant. So, 
If you think we have helped you, then it is your duty to help others as well. And do that by sharing this video with at least five of your friends so it reaches maximum number of people. And do not forget to subscribe my channel and like the video. See you soon. Till then, goodbye and take care.